Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood, and this is Lightburn's Snapping Cursors. Check it out. Before we start with the actual demonstration, I'm going to show you where you can find this information in Lightburn should you need a refresher or a reminder. And let's jump over to Lightburn now. So if we go into Lightburn, and I'm currently still using 1.7.08. 2.0 was released yesterday, but I am playing with it, but I'm not using it here for demonstration purposes. If I go into the help menu and then come down to the online documentation there and then go to my and, and you, if you can change your version of documentation here you just come to the down arrow which one are you using they're gonna if, if you're using 17 it's pretty much gonna be from 17 and back uh, 2.0 is gonna have all the new listings on it so let's go to the 1.7 I'm sorry go back to 1.7 there okay then go to your search bar and I'm searching for snapping if you search for snapping it's going to take you directly to your snapping object cursors your object snapping points these are the icons that your cursor will turn into when you on one of, when you're on one of these points and Lightburn refers to them as object snapping points, and I said snapping cursors. So you have a couple of different icons. You've got the typical crosshairs, where you've got a cross with a circle in the middle, and that's when your cross, when your cursor is on, is your cursor is over any node in a vector graphic, or the corner of an image, any node in a vector graphic or the corner of an image midpoint it's a straight line with a circle in the middle is the midpoint the cursor is over the exact halfway point between two nodes center is a sideways crosshair an X with a circle in the middle the cursor is over the center point of an object the same symbol again can represent represent the intersection. The cursor is over the intersection of two lines. And then the last one is this here. It appears like it's a little heartbeat on an EKG. The cursor is over a line, but not a node, a midpoint, or intersection of that line. So it's just touching the line in a random place. So those are your different icons for your snapping cursors and we're going to take a look and see how those actually function in practical application and how there's a little bit of uh, gray areas in some of these uh, descriptions here so let's go back into lightburn and i've recreated the icons here and this is what the line icon actually looks like it's not actually a heartbeat midpoint corners and intersect now this that i've got here is an image that i created so that i could just have that for representation purposes here are two squares that i created using the uh, rectangle tool so let's start with the line on this square if i come right here and touch anywhere on the line that's not a corner and not a midpoint i get that line that very first icon right here and as long as I'm on the line and not touching a corner or a midpoint that's the the cursor I get corners obviously if I go to the corner then I get that that's let me know that the cursor is on the corner midpoint now in light burn Lightburn said that the, not that one, this one. Midpoint. The cursor is over the exact halfway point between two nodes. All right. And this is where I said there's a little bit of, a little bit of a 
misrepresentation there. Here, if I come on this line, there I'm on a line, all the way down, line, 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 and then boom, now I got a midpoint. And that, according to that, it's the midpoint between two nodes. And so that'd be between that corner and that corner. There's your midpoint. Well, if that's the case, then if this is the corner and this is the corner, then I'm expecting my midpoint to be right there. And there it is. But I'm sorry, that's not the midpoint. That's just, there's the midpoint. That one is when it's over a node. Cause remember that's her corners or over a node. But if I come down here, there's my midpoint. Well, that's obviously not the visual midpoint of those two. There's a midpoint. How is that possible? Well, that's because this one where I get a midpoint in the middle and here I get a node in the middle. If I select these two and go into my nodes, you can see there are no nodes on this, but yet it shows me a midpoint right there. And by their definition, the midpoint is the midpoint between two nodes. Well, there are no nodes here. Here, if I come here, I'm expecting that to be the midpoint between the two corners, but it's not. Right there is the midpoint between this and this, the two nodes. And if I, got, if I zoom in tight, I can get right here and there's another midpoint. It is the midpoint between two nodes. So that is uh, an accurate definition whenever you consider your nodes. Uh, let's go back here again. The cursor is over the exact halfway point between two nodes. So that is absolutely 100% correct, except here there are no nodes and it goes to the midpoint of the object on the line. If I come inside, got to get out of node editing here, deselect them, then there is the intersect cursor, but it's also the midpoint of the object. midpoint there's the center that's not the midpoint but the center of the object and there's the center of the object there's the midpoint but when there whenever it's an object with nodes there's a midpoint you can have multiple midpoints there's a midpoint there's a midpoint so if you're Work, if you're not working with a primitive shape, if you're working with an object that's in a path, you've got multiple nodes, then the midpoint is not the middle of an object, which I was taught early on in my light burn days that when I got that, then I was in the middle of the piece. Well, not if there are multiple nodes. If there are multiple nodes, if it's a path, then it's the midpoint between two nodes is the accurate definition that they have in the help, but it is not the midpoint of the object on that line. So how does this help you when you're creating? Well, let's get rid of this one. I'm gonna duplicate this one, Control D, duplicate it. Now, if I want to quickly uh, set up a, a, a pattern. In fact, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate this a whole bunch of times just by doing control D. Control D, one, two, three, four, five, six times. So now there's seven of those pieces here. And I can do this with an array or I can, depending on how good you are with your mouse and how good of a trackball you've got, you can take that and I'm going to say, right, there to the middle and I'm gonna grab another one and then I'll pull it over here and let's put that one in the middle there we go and let's put this one in the middle of the next one so grab that corner and look for the midpoint right there and just keep doing the same thing now I can 
grab it from the corner right there and just drag it straight to the midpoint. And that's the last duplicate. So there, those are all perfectly placed in the midpoints of each of those objects. I did not need to use the array tool, shift by half or anything. I just I was able to drag them down and position them using the snapping uh, icons. So now let's get rid of these. And if I want to go corner to corner, I can grab that corner and take it to that corner. And now they snap together. Now you'll need your have need to have snapping turned on in your settings. That'll be a different lesson. But there's snap corner to corner, and if you want to have it snap just to the line, then you come up and you get you gotta get on the corner. There we go. There, there. It's just that's letting you know that you've now got them making contact, but that it's not aligned with a corner or the center or the midpoint. And then if you want it to align to the center, you can do just that. You can come up and find that center point right there. And now it's snapped there. And now you can use your pencil tool to do the exact same thing using the same nodes. If I come to that corner, there we go. Start drawing a line and it'll come out till I get to there. Stop drawing, do it again. There we go. And last one. So now, using my snapping features, I was able to draw a perfect cube. Now, uh, let's put a random line through here so we can show you the intersect. So if I start right here and just draw a line through there anywhere. Now I'll go back to my cursor and look at my uh, cursor icons there I'm just on a random line there I'm at the center point of that rectangle or that square in this case there I'm at a corner if I come up here I get, there's the end of my line and then I'm anywhere there I'm on a line but then where they intersect I'll get those crosshairs that's also your intersect it's not just the center of the piece which is uh well that's that's a bit confusing because i'm in the uh corner <laughs> of that those designs where those meet but i'm also it's also the very center of this piece right here as you can see there there's your your center point uh come on there and it snapped right back in place but the intersect will be the same as your center. There's your intersect and then your center of your object. All right, so hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about the variations of your snapping cursors or the uh, icons that the cursor changed to. Hopefully you found this a little bit helpful. I'm Steve, Hubble with Wood, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'm out.